G'day, it's Mark here at Combi Life, and I have the great pleasure of welcoming Leo. Thank you Leo much. Meissner. Leo Meissner. May, uh, come down from the Gold Coast last night to pick up this beautiful van that Leo has entrusted us with to find and to build. We met in June 21, and then you made a decision in May 22, and here we are in December 22, finally the day of handover here at Combi Life Sydney. Leo, uh, may I say welcome and may I ask where you flew from last night? Where did not you come? From, not from the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast. You flew from the Gold Coast last night and this morning, 8 a.m. Yeah, I stayed here at the motel. At the local motel. And, and, here, oh, and, oh. and when did you arrive in Australia? 56. 1956. And how did you arrive? On a Cessna? Yes? On a Cessna. You That's arrived right. on a Cessna. On a Cessna. From yeah. Dili in East from Timor. Dili, from East Timor. From yeah. East Timor. You flew on a Cessna to Darwin. <laughs> How did you get to Dili? How did you get to Dili? It's a long story. It's Just hard. give us a short version. <laughs> I left Germany to go to India with a push bike. And when I got to India, it was far too quick. After three months, I was in India. <laughs> and then I didn't want to go back the same way. So I kept on going. I got a bit inspired by, by the Hinduism. Uh, I lost a bit track of purpose of life. Uh, nothing, nothing matters anymore. You're only <laughs> here for a time being. Yes. And then eventually the reality came. I had to go further or back. I couldn't send India. I could have sent in India, but now I went into Burma, or in Mandalay, and then Nigeria. Yeah. Yes. And then from then Thailand, Burma, Thailand, Singapore, the island hopping, ended up in Darwin, which is just now. Yes, so through in Indonesia, down through the Bali, and uh, down yeah, yeah, to yeah. East Timor, and then to Darwin, and we're we'll saving for another video, perhaps. But there was a lot of uh, a, Bali, a lot of Bali, travel. Bali, States, a lot of tourist mecca, like, <laughs> uh, even then. Then Pasar and you could yes. didn't exist. There yes. no tourists at time. No tourists it's back in then. Top, and then get from from there to Timor, and then eventually to, to, to and then Darwin. Like Darwin, and then to Sydney. Then you came to Sydney after about a year in Darwin. Three years. Three years in Darwin, Darwin as a pastry yeah. chef. Yes. In Darwin, and then opened a bakery. Were you in a bakery in Willoughby? Uh, yes, I met a girl. I wouldn't have, yes. Without Nelly, I wouldn't have said in Sydney. I wouldn't have said in Australia. So I you met your German-born girl in Sydney? Yes. Very funny, with a German camera cop? No, she was born in Lodz in Poland. In Poland, and yes. Still, like, like, yes, all like the, everyone else. Yes, like everyone else. And then, yes. And now she migrated from... I got her address, and she got my address from... The photo club in the Germany. The photo club in Germany. Yeah. She got your address so, and you met yeah. in Sydney. We met in Sydney. And did you ever take her back to, because you got married in Sydney? We got married in Sydney. Did you ever take her back home to see your family? Yes. We and went back, yes. And how did, how did you Six go back? After. How did you go back to <laughs> Germany? <laughs> and motorized with the BMW. With the BMW. The, the sidecar. So you made a sidecar, I think. I made a sidecar. Sent Singapore. it to Singapore? Yes. And then you rode the BMW. No, no in Singapore they, they welded one together. They oh, welded one together in Singapore. Water pipes. It was, it was very simple. And you rode the BMW back to Germany. Back to Germany. Was it a bit quicker that time? Six months. <laughs> but six months. It quicker. But yes. We had time. We went to Kashmir. And Beautiful. Then up, down right out to Madras. Where is Madras? Yes. Up to Simla. Right across India. And then Middle East, Pakistan, back to Germany. And that was about 1963. 63. 63. Back to Germany. So a bit quicker than the 15 months coming out or six months going back. So Much a little bigger. bit quicker on, on the bigger. motorbike. And so then, Nelly's very adventurous. She was very adventurous because I guess she, she you didn't have me. a nice hot, it didn't have a nice shower and a van. In it, it was in a motorbike. We slept, we slept <laughs> six months mostly in our tent. It was a Deuter tent. In a Deuter there no, tent? There was no, there was no shower. It was <laughs> just what you came in the sidecar. Yes. And then we, Nelly was, she, she trusted me. You know, you have done it. Yes. You, you have been here, you know. Yes. It is very, very embarrassing because if someone puts a trust on you, you don't know what to do, but you, okay, you yeah. trusted me, I'm the leader. And did you meet a few people when you went back to Germany? Did you meet a few people you'd seen on the way through on the push yes, bike? Yes, even some monks in Benares. When I really, even some monks, okay. They, they remembered me. They remembered you. Because, <laughs> You know, the leader holds me, you know, yes. you're, you're, like, you're a temple. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime in Australia, you've had lots of travelling in Australia, most recently in a Toyota. Since my wife passed away. Yes, since your wife passed. 14 years ago. Yes, 14 years. I kept years. on travelling alone. Travelling alone, so you've kept the travel up, and most recently in the Toyota. 
with a rooftop tent. The rooftop tent for you, that for two now. Yeah. Yes, which you bought, I think, five or six years ago? Seven years ago. And you did 130,000 kilometers in that? 135. 135,000? I, I shortchanged you 5,000 kilometers. <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. And uh, you've moved to a van. Why did you choose a van instead? Uh, I think the roof tent is it's okay if the sun is shining. If it is raining, you got nowhere to go. You get wet, yes. you put it turned up. You get wet, yes. you put it down. You can't cook, you can't do anything. And then my age as well. Yes, so a little bit with the ladder up and down, and when yeah. it rains, it's not yeah, quite it rains, so not, yeah. not quite so comfortable. So I want more comfort. And then That's a right. compromise between a four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive. Yes. This is cycle uh, suspension. Yes. So I've, I'm very much confident now I can do nearly the same as before. I think you can do... I think you can do the same as before. Mm. I did invite Leo to do our four motion masters training course. As a and, as and as quick as a flash, he said, as a teacher, can I come and teach on the course? No. <laughs> yeah. my, my, my first car was a, a short wheelbase Land Rover from around Jungle. This is 60 years ago. And short since, wheel time, since the time I've driven four wheel drive. Leo, so thank you for that snapshot of an amazing life. And uh, let's have a look at the van. It's a TDI 340 T6.1. Uh, it, it's got some really, really good features. The things that you would like in a van. It has, uh, the van itself is short wheelbase. It has two sliding doors. It doesn't have any fancy digital cockpit or anything, but it has the things you want with the factory windows, the factory opening windows in the windows. It's got the rear diff lock, the hill descent control. It has um, two captain's chairs. On the inside, the captain's chairs rather than the bench seat are much better because we can swivel them. And it has the armrests as well. So we've got armrests throughout the front cabin. It's just really nicely configured this particular, this particular vehicle. We can swivel the chair easily as well to make, to make more space in the back. So we can have... We have two swivel seats. We'll leave that one uh, as it is for the moment. We've equipped the vehicle with the Arco sliding system, which is fantastic. So we have a single bed or a double bed. Very important to Leo in this case was to have lots of storage inside the vehicle, not to put everything on the roof. Not only does it help keep the center of gravity lower, it also helps make things easy to get. We don't necessarily want spare tires and max tracks on the roof uh, at this age and stage. So we have lots of storage here with the Arco system. We can also see within the vehicle from this angle that we have really a lot of sound deadening and a lot of uh, interior lining as well. So what was just a, a bare shell, I'll see if I can find a photo to insert of the bare shell. It is now really beautifully done with interior lining. The Vanessa pack bags even recessed into that lining and we'll show that working in a minute. You can also see we've equipped the vehicle with an awning. We'll demonstrate the awning in just a second, but the awning has a new special feature here, just down here on the B pillar. It has some additional switches here. So the lighting, so I can turn the lights to white light, which is now on, and then I can hold this button down and now it's brightening up above me. And that's a very bright day here in Sydney today, but I can see that's bright. And now I can switch the light to the position two and it's orange. So when it's got mozzies around and so on, that is pretty cool and I can hold the button down and it should dim off now so it's dimmed right down so it's pitch black in the outback we want just a very little amount of light not to damage our, our night vision so that's a really really nice feature of of the awning which we'll have a look at more closely in a second we're fitted with curtains mozzie nets we've also added additional interior lighting this is all running off the lithium battery system so there's a lithium battery system under the driver's seat that charges whilst the car is in motion also has a solar connector and a 240 charger which we'll come to in a moment but that's running things like the lights and which leo hasn't seen yet the new cabin fan i'll be very very careful this thing <laughs> very careful so we have the cabin fan operating on three speeds it also has a timer of three six nine twelve hour timer so we can run some ventilation through the vehicle on a hot day and we can rotate the fan through all angles. So we can really get a good direction on that fan. But yes, be careful with it, but I don't think you'll lose any, any fingers with the, no. with the fan. 
We have here the pack bags now recessed into, into the wall. So that's a really nice new way of doing it. So that's new for us. So it just gives us a little bit more width inside the vehicle for man manipulation of the mattresses. And as everybody has seen before in the other videos, you know, the pack bags just have such a huge amount of space within them. And there's even an additional zipper here now and the um, mobile phone holder, the glasses holder and the keys holder there as well. And that will just slide back in comfortably there. We have mounted the awning wand here. So I want to do an awning demonstration now as well. So let's get this awning out before any wind comes up. So we'll make sure this door is closed. So Leo, do you want to watch the awning, awning demonstration? So I typically put in the wand from behind. Yeah. Because that's less awkward than the other way. And then I fold this up okay. and then fold this piece down. And these pieces are uh, able to move freely so it doesn't burn my hands. You can wind it out. About shoulder width, so about the width of my shoulders. And walk under the van, so bring your back to the van, Leo. Yeah. And I put one hand here, one hand here. So put your, put your left hand at the other end. Yep, to grab it out, put your left hand at the other end if you can. That's it, just to pull the, that's it, to pull that out. And down, undo the wing nut. Let the go all the way to the ground. Push the awning up a bit, Leo. Push it up. Now, before you have done, done the wing nut. Up a little, and then tighten it up. And now you can keep winding it out, Leo, if you want to. So now we can keep winding the awning out. So what we do at each end, we'll, oh, so if you can grab that leg, and cut it out a bit. That goes all floppy, that's too far. Now we back it up a little bit, and now that's nice and tight. So now we have a really lovely shaded area here. Another feature we've done, Mark, on the camera here is the, uh, the rain guard. So I've put a new type of rain guard in here. And Leo, that'll be a nice thing for you to note. There's a rain guard under here to stop rainwater coming in through this sliding door. So that's a bit of an innovation as well that we've just done to make sure that it's as comfortable as possible uh, when it's raining, when you're on the coast or in the rainy season up north. So there's the rain guard there. Also, Leo, you asked us something, something very special. You don't always like to sleep in the van. Where do you like to sleep? In the hammock. In the hammock. <laughs> In the hammock, I spend in, most of the time in the hammock. In the hanger sleep. matter. In the <laughs> hanger matter, yeah. So here we have some special hooks here to put the hammock on. Yeah. So that's just fantastic. And we've also got yeah, them at the find back. It, find a tree so, on the other side. So we just need a tree on the other side. How far? You normally want about six meters from the tree. I got, I got plenty of rope. <laughs> you got plenty of rope? Yes. So we have another one up here as well. Yeah. And that's all nut inserted into the awning brackets. So really securely, we've uh, put about 90 kilograms of weight on that and so far so good. Yeah. So Leo, hopefully with 90 kilograms in the it's tree. Only half. Really? It's only half. Got the other half. <laughs> That's exactly right. So we should be okay with that. So to wind the awning in again. So actually we'll just do for the completion of the video, Leo. If it's raining, if it's raining, we want to lower one side. Okay. Yeah. So that the rainwater comes off. And what we also do normally is just give the awning a tap to get the leaves, any leaf leaves down here and brush off the leaves so it doesn't go in asymmetrically. So put that back up, let's wind him in, that's it. Other way, other way. Just yep. So we'll keep winding to around about shoulder width. Just remember to bring the legs in. Keep going. So about there. That's about it. Undo the wing nuts. 
all the way to the top, that's it. And secure the wing nuts. Now, just one thing to note here, Leo, this end piece has to be flat against the fascia. So this piece, push that around, flat. And up the other end there, up the other end, that piece has to be all the way in. Just link So put that all the way in, that's it. And click. Okay. Let's click. We'll have a positive click. Good to know. Good to know, that's right. And we're recording it, so we can do it here. So just keep winding. We'll keep winding the awning. And these little red tabs are going to go in. These red tabs, when it's fully secured, the red tabs will be retracted. That's it. Done. Done. Instant shade. Instant shade. And that will store in the back here. There we go. We have the Arco system here, and there's some really special features about the Arco system in this case. Leo, you asked me in the early days how much water does the Arco system have, and I told you it has 13 litres. Yeah. 13 litres. This is for Sunday picnic. For the Sunday picnic. Yeah. So I'm not the Sunday picnic. So you wanted some more water. So I said, Leo, we've got some good under vehicle water solutions. No. And you said no. No. Why? Why? Because if it gets stuck in the mud, you, and the battery is flat, or some, some holes in the underwater can Holes from the stones? No. You so you lose water. the water? You lose the water. Or you water. can't get to the water? That's right. So you had to make me think about this a bit harder, yeah. and we found some really nice wheel arch tanks. So right next to Mark here is a wheel arch tank here, and we also have on this side the wheel arch tank. So I'll just retract this again so we get a bit better access to it. So we can see the wheel arch tank. It is partially obscured by the uh, timber there, so we put an extra shelf in. And we can easily take this take this off, fill up the water. It's got a really big, yep. so we've got a jerry can. We've got a really big filler opportunity there. And we've separately put in the submersible 12 volt sink pump and then a hose connection on each side. This will work as it is. However, we can grab the hose. I think that's in the off position. I'll turn the pump on. And now we'll have water when I just adjust this here. There's a fair amount of water coming out here. So what we can do is use the water like that or even we can refill the Van Essa system here. Let's take this submersible sink pump out here. And now I'll just adjust my valve. So this is a really, really good solution. Leo, thank you for making us think about that. So I've got 24 litres per wheel arch tank. So we've got an extra 48 litres an extra 48 litres on board in addition to the 13 litres here. So now, we can put that back, re-secure it. Get that flat, that's it. We'll put the securing piece on the Arco here at the back. That's now secure. And we have here the optional shower attachment as well. So we just connect up. We've put the uh, adapter on already. I'm still on. No, it's not on. We just need to hold that up so it runs back into the tank. Yeah. Otherwise it will act as a siphon. That's now, that's now clear. So put this on. So we have really good I haven't submerged the, the pump fully there. Okay. And it still it works. It's not down enough. It wasn't down quite enough. There we go. There's not quite enough. It's not quite down enough there. There we go. Now it's working very nicely in the shower. And we can even hang that up here. Oh, 
<laughs> what else? <laughs> what else? So we can hang the shower up there and make good use, make good use of the system there. We'll put that back. Put the uh, put the securing strap back. The securing aluminium back there. Okay, so that's the Arca. We also have the twin burner stove here with the Primus twin burner stove with the yeah. additional gas bottles here as yeah. well. So they're secured here underneath the underneath the system here at the back. Okay, so we'll undo the, the shower. We've also added to the back tailgate area here curtains, so you can have instantaneous privacy in the vehicle as well. And they're blackout curtains. So it's quite hot here at the moment in the sun, but this will provide a little bit of additional shade here as well. What else? What else? <laughs> happy with that, Leo? I'm very happy. Very, very happy with that. So that's good. So we've got fans, but lights, this shade. My, this blocks my the rear vision. That will block the rear vision. So yeah. for travel, we will open them up again. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully the camera copes with that. And we have the tie back straps. Yeah. And we can tie them, tie them back together here. So we've got good rear vision. And we also have the press studs here. If we want full block out, yeah. we can press stud those in and create a nice seal for the vehicle so I'll just put the other one on here as well okay that's clicked together uh, what else can we show you I'll just pull the pull the mattress back here this we have another Arco second Arco slide here so Leo you're thinking about some of your storage boxes maybe the max tracks could go here perhaps yes yes I think they fit in they should fit in the max tracks your current max tracks We've also fitted the tow bar, there's part of the tow bar, yeah. things are, uh, the uh, thermal mats, yeah. the mozzie nets are here as well. Let's have a look at the underside of the vehicle. Actually, before we do, there's also some additional mozzie nets and curtains here as well. So that's the, uh, the van shower uh, side mozzie net. This will work, it's been nicely installed for the right side here and this will allow the door to close confidently with the mozzie net installed. Leo you had a very specific, there were three things you were worried about, water was a key thing and the, tires. And the other key thing was the tyres. So I've seen some photos with big punctured tyres in the back of your Toyota. Tell me about why you wanted these tyres. Because I got a lot of my time is bush tracks. Bush tracks, off-road. Off um, there is no road, when you say off-road there's not much road. There's not much road, no. <laughs> uh, I think the, the, the irrigation, um, the, the corrugation of the road compresses the tyre for, for many, many miles. You don't get necessarily high pressure in the tyre, you can let the air out, but you come to a point where the, the sidewalls don't like the Constantina type pressure yes. and they just blow out. They eventually the blow out. The strong sidewalls is the most important thing. We recently posted a video between my favourite, the Pirelli Scorpion, no. which is fantastic on sand and so on. Yes. But we noticed, uh, and, and our cameraman Mark Gorman here, noticed that the BF Goodrich was a good five plus kilograms heavier than the Pirelli. Yes. And where did that come from? From this side wall. Yes. This side it was wall. much, much tougher. So look at that video. We'll try and put a link in this section of the film now to the video between the Pirelli and the, yeah. and the BF Goodrich. Uh, the BF Goodrich is a bit noisier on the road, but when you're going where you are going, I know. I you know. need the tyres, otherwise you're not going. Braking is also a bit different. Braking is a little bit different with the BF better. Goodrich. So Leo, when you're in the outback on those off-road corrugated roads, how much tyre pressure do you normally let out in your experience? On the off-road, I only take the tyre pressure down if it is sandy. Otherwise, I leave the full pressure on, I have a rough ride, but I don't worry about potholes. If you got low tire pressure, you hit a pothole, you damage the tire or the rim even. Yes. If you got full pressure like the trucks, they go through potholes like hell. They never have a problem hitting a pothole. 
Men nu må jeg ikke se lår i et tag, for det er så. Og du kan få tål, bæn. Ja, det er et problem. And if it's a lower pressure as well, you have all those in the desert in Western Queensland, the gibber stones, these sharp stones. So what's your experience with those sharp stones slashing the tyres between low pressure and high pressure? Low pressure is supposed to be better, but I think with these tyres, you have a lot of gold, you have a lot of uh, leeway. A lot of leeway because the strong not, side will not lower the tire pressure. Yeah, so you're when you're using your BF good riches on that previous Toyota in the desert with the stones, yes. with the corrugations, yeah. to keep the tire pressure yeah. high. I tell you when I go to Tanami again, I tell you how it is. Tell us when you've done the Tanami. Is that yeah. one of your trips coming up? Yeah, coming up. Tanami. Yeah. We also have on here because one of the uh, issues with these vans is we want a bit of extra height. Yes. With obstacles on the road. So we've got the cycle suspension, the genuine cycle suspension. So that has been fitted. Yes. And this gives the vehicle a good 30 millimeters plus, you know, it varies, I haven't got the figures on this car to hand, but about 30 millimeters. Plus we gained extra height on the BF Goodriches as well. They are the 225 6517 all terrains. And uh, Mark, just remind me, are these winter rated, these ones? Yes, they are. They are winter, there we go, the three peaks, I've just found the symbol. So the Three Peaks winter rating mud and snow tyre. So they're also good in wintry conditions as well. Not that I imagine you'll take it to the snow no, too often, Leah. I don't want to go to snow. I don't Finally, know it's cold. we have on the vehicle lots of underbody protection for where you're going and recovery points. So we've got the recovery points here. There's one on each side, a left and right, up to 8,000 kilograms of force. And then we have the engine guard here. And we have on that side, the rock slider, and on this side, we have the fuel tank guard. There's a big fuel tank guard here, and it protects the um, AdBlue tank if it has one. This car doesn't have AdBlue. And we have a rear diff guard, and we have the rock slider as well, and the muffler guard, which we might have some cutaway photos to that as well. Leo, I think we've covered most of the main things. Let Most me go. Of, Let me go. Let you want to go and see your friends here in Sydney before uh, you head back? Not so much, but I got overloaded now. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, tell us about your. You said to me on your text message last week, Mark, how is the car going? The Outback is calling me. It's calling me. That's what you said. The Outback I'm is calling, calling me. I so where are you going to head once you get home to the Gold Coast? Pack uh, the car. In Aminka. In Aminka. So in the Flinders Ranges. Yeah, it's. it's Northern Flinders Rangers. Northern Flinders Rangers. You, you go from Queensland, you get out in the Minka, and then you, you drive the Skeletsky track. Streslecky track. You come to Udnadatta. Udnadatta, yes. And then you are down the Air Peninsula. Air Peninsula, and then are you thinking of heading to Western Australia? Uh, so the weather. The weather. Yes, depends on the weather. Yeah. Very good. Well, many, many happy miles, thank and you. please send us some photos from the road. Yeah, Keep in okay. touch. Leo, okay. thank you. Thank you very happy much. Happy Kafloit.